Finland is a Nordic country with a unique geography and happy people. Probably most of you heard that Finland is one of the happiest countries in the world. According to the World Happiness Report, for the sixth year in a row, Finland is the world's happiest country. Thus, you may also presume that people here feel safe enough. Even so, even in Finland, there were serial killers who shocked the entire nation with their deeds. Hello everyone and welcome back into the room where even walls have ears. Thank you very much for clicking on this video and I hope you will enjoy it. If you are the subscriber of my channel, welcome back. And if you are new to my channel, welcome to the room where I share some true crime stories with my audience. Today we will visit one of my favorite parts of our planet, Scandinavia. I just love the sceneries of countries in that region. I can watch beautiful photos of amazing scenery for hours. If you, the viewer, are from Scandinavia, please let me know in the comment section below. Moreover, Scandinavian countries are famous for being safe, relatively safe. Therefore, the people of Finland were shocked when they got to know about a woman serial killer who was terrorizing the society. I think today's story is a special one because today I will tell you about a serial killer who was a woman. This is the very first video on my channel about a woman, so I hope you will appreciate it and support it with a like. Today I will tell you the story of Aina Nikopkoski, who was also called the Angel of Death. If you are also interested, stay tuned, and let's get started without further ado. Unfortunately, there isn't much information about her childhood and youth, so I will share with you the info I managed to find. She was born in November 1950, in a Finnish village not far from the city of Oulu. It is also known that, as a young lady, she used to work in the beauty industry. Later, she decided to change her career path and started studying to become an assistant nurse. In 1985, she finished her studies and worked in different hospitals and care homes since then. At the end of the 80s, she got married and some sources say that she had at least one child. In 2004, she started working in a big hospital in the capital city of Helsinki where she was living. As a worker, she was always portrayed as a hardworking person, who was always careful, attentive and passionate towards other people. While some patients praised her and insisted on her taking care of them, others complained that she was putting too much emphasis on her private life in conversations with them. Comparatively, she didn't talk to her colleagues and the topics they discussed were very specific. For example, some colleagues said that she would talk about her relationships outside of her marriage. She was also caught lying, but since those lies were harmless, nobody took them too seriously. All her black deeds happened between 2004 and 2009, when she was working in different healthcare institutions. Her first victim was an 81-year-old woman. She had surgery and was being hospitalized. After the surgery, she was under the constant surveillance of doctors, and her condition was perfectly fine, since the surgery was successful. But her nurse was Aino. Aino gave her medication in a huge amount, and that severely affected the patient's central nervous system. The woman died of an overdose, or to be more exact, she was killed. Her death was not investigated, therefore, everyone thought that she died of complications from the surgery. Aino's debauchery continued. Starting from 2004 to 2005, she stole a lot of medication from hospitals she was working for. One time she even tried to steal her patient's wallet. Not only that, but she was also accused of being addicted to some medical drugs. Later, it was also stated that one time she tried to poison her colleague by adding medication to her coffee, but fortunately her colleague wasn't harmed. In 2006, she was given probation for 15 days after being charged for stealing medication and patients' belongings. Even though she was charged, she continued to work in the same hospital like nothing had happened. 
Around the same time, another patient died because of the same reason after Aina gave him a large dose of medication. But this was also ignored and Aina continued working in the hospital. The same year after changing her workplace, Aina tried to poison another of her victims, but this time the victim survived. After that, one after the other, an 183-year-old woman and an 185-year-old man were hospitalized with signs of overdose from medication, but they managed to survive too. During that time, Aina was working as a home nurse. Basically, she would visit patients in their houses. That was the most favorable environment where she could implement her plans. Other two patients were poisoned later as well, and one of them lost her life. She had a pattern according to which she acted. First, she gave the fatal medication. When the symptoms of poisoning began to appear, she phoned the emergency center and sometimes the relatives of the victim. She tried to use those phone calls to make sure that no one would suspect her. Even though many patients suddenly died while being under the care, there were no accusations against her. In 2007, Aino attempted to murder another woman, but she survived. In 2008, Aino killed another patient who first was hospitalized, but later was getting home treatment. And again, her nurse was Aino. In 2008, Aino was advertising her services in a magazine and looking for some job. She ended up doing elderly service for an old woman who was looking for an assisting nurse. Aina was taking care of the elderly woman. She was taking her out and preparing some food for her. One day Aino showed up uninvited. Later the lady said that when Aino came to her place that morning, she offered a meal to the old lady, but first the lady refused to eat saying that she was not hungry. Then Aino made a mix of yogurt and drugs and gave it to the old lady. Of course the yogurt tasted awful and after eating a little, the lady started feeling not well. That night the elderly woman fell and hurt her face. The next thing she remembers is how she woke up in the hospital. Aino called the ambulance and told the doctors that the old lady tried to commit suicide by taking a lot of medication. Aino also called the daughter of the old lady and told her that her mother seemed very depressed before trying to commit suicide. The daughter got really angry. She knew her mother would never commit suicide. She told to other nurses that someone must have mixed something into her mother's meal. Meanwhile, the old lady almost died. Her treating doctor said that she must be very lucky. She was about to die, but she survived. During the investigation, it was revealed that Aino stole some of her belongings. In 2009, the fifth and the last victim of Aino died after taking a lot of medication. The investigation started after the old lady, whom Aino claimed to be suicidal, reported on her. The allegations and suspicions against Aino started to rise. The investigation started. Of course, Aino was denying all the allegations against her and all cases of poisoning. The defense stated that the deaths of her patients occurred because of natural causes and had nothing to do with Aino. During the investigation, corpses of the deceased had to be unburied for autopsy. The overdose of medication was found in the bodies of two of her patients. When her apartment was investigated, almost 1,800 medication pills were found in her place, some of which were identical to those given to patients by Aina. Some of the belongings of patients were also found in her place. Even though the pills that the police found in her apartment was an obvious evidence, she used an excuse of being a nurse. She said that she was a nurse, so it was natural for her to put some medication and pills in her pocket, forget about them, and bring them home. Of course, she also refused all allegations related to poisoning the old lady, whom she called suicide-prone. She said that she wanted to check on her patient, and that's why she came uninvited that day. Aino said she found her patient lying on the ground unconscious. Meanwhile, the old lady was speculating why Aino would try to kill her. She assumed that a couple of days ago, the lady had been writing a letter to her relative in which she wrote that she didn't trust her nurse Aino. Aino was asked to send the letter, but the relative has never received that letter. The lady thought that Aino read the letter and got angry. I want to mention that during the investigation and even after Aina was imprisoned, 
The real motive of her murders was not identified. Her trial was held in December 2010. She pleaded not guilty. On December 22, 2010, she was sentenced to life imprisonment with the ability to apply for a parole after 12 years, according to the rules of Finland. Aino was charged with five counts of murder and five attempted murders. This became the largest murder case in modern Finnish history. Even though the motive was unclear, there were some assumptions that she probably did that because of the properties of her patients. During the assessment of a psychiatrist, Aino was claimed to be a psychopath, and the doctor said she was suffering from antisocial personality disorders. This kind of person is an aggressive one, and disregards the safety of others. They generally do not have empathy towards others. Even so, Aina was totally responsible and aware of everything she was doing. Moreover, she was manipulating others and lying. She was also misusing her position as a nurse. After the sentence, her husband divorced her. Later, Aina got married to another prisoner while being in the prison. Her new husband is 20 years younger than her. After the marriage, she changed her first and last names. She became Anne Maria Milgren. Aina couldn't understand why she would be sentenced to life imprisonment. Her relations with her patients she described as good and friendly. She described herself as a caring nurse. In 2020, she applied for parole, but her application was postponed till March 2021. Starting from 2020, she was also allowed to work in an outpatient institution. In 2020, she was also permitted to spend some time on holidays without accompanying guards. There was a chance that she would be released after 12 years in prison, since her behavior was satisfactory. However, experts stated that Aina would probably commit another violent murder. That is why, in March 2021, when she applied for parole after she served 12 years in prison, her application was rejected, since she was pronounced as potentially dangerous to society. Since there is no information about her childhood and her parents, we will never know what she had been through. Generally, people who are maniacs or psychopaths become traumatized of their environment, but this is not about Aino. She's from Finland, which is well known for being one of the best places in the world for people's well-beingness. But then again, we will never know what was going on in Aino's head. This is pretty much everything I wanted to share with you this time. Thank you very much if you watched this video till the very end. What do you think of Aino and everything she had done? Have you ever heard about this story before, by the way? If you want to share your own opinion on this case, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. If you want to support my channel, you can just click the like button and subscribe to my channel and make me happy. If possible, share this video with people you know, so more people will be aware of this story. As always, take care of yourselves. And see you next time.